Do you want to improve at a quicker pace? Check out getgoodracing.com. I've coached hundreds of drivers from real life racers to sim enthusiasts who experience rapid improvement after just one session. And while investing in top-notch hardware is great, imagine how much more you can elevate your experience by adding coaching to the mix. My methods are practical, aiming to break down complex concepts into easily digestible bits that are simple to understand. You can find reviews of the sessions I've conducted on the Fiverr link provided in the video description. Let's elevate your racing skills together. Now for the trial guide. For turn 1, what I'm using as a reference for braking is the 50 meter board right here. You want to brake as much as you can in the straight line with the initial pressure and very important with this car, you don't want to trail brake into higher percentage. The tires will micro lock up and you will lose a lot of time. So what I'm doing, I'm picking 80% on the initial braking on a straight line with the steering wheel as straight as possible but then I'm blading the brakes very very quickly and right now the common mistake would be for me to keep trail braking in the 20 percentages that's not gonna work just because this car doesn't like trail braking with higher percentage so it does look like trail braking but with 10 percentages or less so what I'm doing right now I'm dropping from 27 immediately to 6 and I will be continuing holding this low pressure like 6, 7, 8, 4, 3 so as you can notice in this brake shape the, the trail brake, the last part of the braking is done in sub 10 percentages and that's gonna be key around here the moment that you drop the brakes you should be back on power and I'm using this curb to hook the car up nicely so uh, I'm just kissing the curb with the right tires and then holding on the power. If you notice that you go too much on the left side, that's generally a, a problem with understeering mid-corner. So if you understeer mid-corner in turn one, you will run out a bit wider on the left. And even though you might carry a bit more speed, just because you have to bring the car all the way to the right side and the next corner is very, very close, it might not be worth it. Now for the next one, in the middle of the curb almost I'm doing the turn in and when I turn in I'm doing like a 3% 2% 1% braking just to make sure that the tires will point and I want to hit almost hit this yellow sausage curb so the closer you're gonna be here the, the faster you're gonna be into the next corner because the next corner is the one that matters but in order to have a good corner here you have a you need a good exit in the previous one. So I want to be as close as I can to the white line on the left. And then with a throttle at 100% for this corner, it's just a lift. You just lift and then go back. But a little secret for this track with this car, when you are at the apex, so let's say you're progressively turning into the apex and you arrive now at the apex, give it like a 5% or 5, 10 degrees more on steering wheel. So you can do something like this, you're turning, 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 and at the apex, give it more like this. You, you just force it a bit more with the fronts, and it's a quick movement just to check if you have some grip left on the front tires, because most often you will find yourself with the front tires being under the limit of grip. So that's what I'm doing. Notice my steering wheel now, and then I give it just a bit more at the apex and then I'm relaxing on the exit so try it I think it's gonna work very well for these types of corners same here in the middle of the curb just applying a bit of brakes just to make the car turn in very close to the curb putting the power down and right now the same thing just a lift and then at the apex forcing a bit the steering wheel and getting back on power don't drop it to zero percent if you find yourself dropping it to zero percent it just mean it just means that you had a difficult line going into the corner so because the second corner depends on the first if you're gonna have a bad exit on the first the second one you will have to lift more so you will judge your corner both of them based on the exit on the final one and if you find that you're dropping the throttle to zero then that's not what you want to do now for this corner i'm looking at this car on the left side and whenever i don't see it anymore i just 
tap, tap the brakes. I want to brake here just to make the car turn. I don't want to slow it down at all. I just want to keep the momentum going. So holding the brakes in 15%, 10%, and then before even touching this green part, I'm already back on power like that. And you want to cut a lot. So it, it looks like I'm almost cutting to the grass and that's fine because immediately afterwards, at 100% throttle, you will try to bring the car as much as you can to the right side. You won't overdo it. You won't have your purpose to bring it to the right, but you have a small time in between the previous corner and the next in which you have to do something with the car, you have to, to hustle it. If you're gonna stay a bit too relaxed and just turn left and so on, that's not gonna be the way to do it because in this corner right here, it's an easy flat, but if you're gonna turn too early and if you won't have the necessary um, line into it, uh, it can become very difficult with a bigger lift than is needed. So right now it's flat, I do like 5% lift, to make sure I won't track out wide and for the next one again the same thing with a fixed setup very difficult to take it flat so you will have to adjust your throttle application just to make sure you're not gonna track out wider so those two are my lifts here try to minimize them going into the next corner using a bit this curve on the left and my reference for braking is the moment that I'm starting to see the next corner basically the, the apex the curb because right now we will go downhill but we're not yet going downhill we're on a plateau right now but the moment that i see i see that okay it's a bit of a downhill part now i see it then i'm applying the brakes and again it's almost the same as the previous corner you want to brake just to make the car point not to slow it down too much so braking in a way and trail braking in the lower six percentages so that I'm very close to this yellow sausage curve and then immediately putting the power down. Here it's just a lift. I had a mistake by hitting that yellow curve. You want to be very close but without hitting it. And the second lift, this one right here, was a result of me hitting the curve. So ideally the input should look like going on throttle, doing a lift but not a full lift and then 100% again without the second lift. Now, this corner and the last one are very similar. I'm breaking here at this white line after the 50. And what you want here is to brake very, very softly and carry the speed into the corner, push the car a bit wider and trail brake in the lower 20 percentages. So what I'm doing, picking like 30 and now I'm trail braking in 10, 20 percentages like that. So a long trail braking. Don't brake very hard. So the shape will be like a square, so hard and short, break it softer but hold it for longer and then whenever you go on power it's 100% throttle in without doing corrections on power. This one and the next one, these two are flat out corners and for the last one it's exactly the same thing as the previous corner, just that you have to break a bit harder initially. So in this one, you would break just a bit ha harder, it's like 10% harder, but then again, you're going to trail break in the lower percentage. So it's a, a bit more harder initial break, but then as we talk in, talked in turn one, you don't want to trail break with a lot of pressures because the fronts can go past their limit. So trail breaking in the lower 10 percentages, modulating a bit the throttle, that's not going to be ideal. Ideally, you want to go from 0 to 100 without doing this stop at 50 but in short that's a track guide of Mugello with F4 it's a very fun track and I think the racing here is going to be very good I hope you have a great week ahead and I'll see you on the next one bye bye